Hi, and welcome to our Sunday School and Social Justice Ministry collaboration series. This collaborative series was set up to address issues of social justice in today's world. It was based loosely on the book, Mobilizing Hope, Faith-Inspired Activism for a Post-Civil Rights Generation by Reverend Adam Taylor. The collaboration is broken down into five different components to match the five pillars of the social justice ministry. Those pillars include criminal justice reform, education reform, voter empowerment and education, economic justice, and racial healing and reconciliation. At the conclusion of this series, there will be a webinar with Reverend Adam Taylor to discuss the series and his book. Additionally, we've made available for you a workbook uh, that's available online. And in that workbook, there is a worksheet that enables you to check off the activities that you do. In addition, if you feel the need to do more is calling you, then by all means, reach out to either the Sunday School Ministry at sundayschool at alfredstreet.org or the Social Justice Ministry at socialjustice at alfredstreet.org. Thank you again and enjoy the series. Hello, my name is Reverend Samuel Nixon, Jr. I teach you with the Men's Sunday School class at Alfred Street Baptist Church. Hi, my name is Camille Burden. I am a co-lead for the education reform pillar of the social justice ministry. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Huang. I'm the other co-lead for education reform in the social justice ministry. Hi, I'm Deacon Alma Haygood, and I am a Sunday school teacher for the upper elementary at Alpha Street Baptist Church. In this information age, we are constantly flooded with issues. Why is social justice an issue for us all? Looking through the lens, the Hebrew words of mishpah, meaning to govern or to judge, and tzedekah, meaning righteousness or the way things ought to be, shows up about over a thousand times in the Bible. Uh, so when you combine these words together, the words give a, a deeper, more holistic definition of justice, which is actually to restore a right relationship with ourselves and God, our neighbor, and creation. Uh, in Mobilizing Hope, Reverend Adam Taylor uh, highlights this, particularly in Isaiah, the 58th chapter. We'll see there a reference to what the children of Israel, they had been under the Babylonian captivity and they're speaking, uh, the prophet Isaiah is telling them that there's actually a challenge that they have. And one of the things that's pointed out in the, that sixth verse of, the, of that 58th chapter, when the prophet speaks to them, he states that he talks about a fast that I have chosen. It's a question that they raise about this fast that they've done because they've been going through practices that are outwardly the right things to do. And you and I know those things that you can do ritualistically that we go through all the time. But the prophet is calling out the fact that uh, the question is raised, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens and to let the oppressed people go free, that you break every yoke? By the time he gets to that eighth to the 12th verses, he's, he's bringing them to the realization that if you do these things, and this is in the whole section of Mishpah, uh, again, says in those 8 to the 12 verses, essentially that if you do this, then the light shall break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and the righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward for acts of compassion of charity. Uh, it's not the same as justice. Compassion of charity tends to meet or alleviate immediate needs, but we're talking about justice where you're actually getting at the core of reducing what's causing those needs to come forth. And the last portion in terms of the notion in the Isaiah 58 text uh, reminds us that liberation and wholeness is ultimately what we want to be at. We want, God wants us to be doing things that helps liberate others just as he has liberated us. 
Isaiah 58 is consistent with a prevalent theme throughout the Bible. We are called to be concerned for those who are unable to speak or advocate effectively for themselves, foreigners, widows, orphans, and the poor. Kingdom Ethics outlines four themes of injustice addressed by Jesus. Injustice of greed and exploitation is seen in Mark 11:17 where Jesus overturns the tables of money changes. Domination of the powerless is seen in Mark 5, 1 through 20, where Jesus cast out unclean spirit legion. Legion is a Latin term common to Jews and Greeks that defines a Roman military unit of 6,000 infantrymen. The third theme is violence, as seen in Matthew 5, 38 through 43, where Jesus teaches us to love our enemies and practice forgiveness, which involves turning the other cheek and breaking the cycle of revenge. And finally, exclusion from community as seen in Matthew 15, one through nine, where Jesus challenged purity practices that separated people. The identification of these four themes of injustice is very important to education reform. No school has been untouched by these four themes. There are several other references in scripture that demonstrate a concern for those who could not advocate for themselves. Consider how these themes relate to a group who do not have all rights to advocate for themselves today, children. Education reform is an important issue. Education reform has provided the pathway for important civil rights victories in US history such as Brown versus Board of Education, the seminal case which established that separate is not equal and led to the desegregation of schools. Also, Plyler v. Doe, the Supreme Court case which ruled that states must provide free public education to children regardless of their documented legal status. In thinking about the educational reform pillar of the Social Justice Ministry at Alfred Street Baptist Church, the word learn makes clear the work that we do. We use LEARN as an acronym. Each letter represents and is relevant to the work of education reform. L stands for learning. E stands for experience. A stands for accountability to God. R stands for resources. And N stands for next. When we look at L, what we glean from Solomon's instructions in Proverbs 4, 7 is the value of learning and the constant encouragement to do so, to acquire wisdom, knowledge, and instruction, even to the point that it costs all that we have. For e-experiences, you can't talk about education reform and not land on a discussion about the disparate experiences that students face in American schools today. The reality is, students of different races and students from different social economic backgrounds have vastly different educational experiences. We know as Christians that we are charged with ensuring that the poor and marginalized are not forgotten. The A in LEARN stands for accountability to God. As Christians, we know that God knows our hearts, minds, and actions, and we are accountable to him. Further, we are commanded to love one another, to love our neighbor as ourselves. In the Education Reform Subcommittee, we believe that loving our neighbor includes working to ensure that others have the same access to education and are able to receive its benefits. R in LEARN stands for resources. Funding is important. With money, schools can do lots of things. The national average of per pupil sp spending is $12,756. In the local DMV area, for in Virginia, the per pupil spending is approximately $10,500. And in Maryland, that amount is $13,146. And in DC, it's approximately $21,900. With this money, schools can buy textbooks and computers, have music and arts classes, sports teams, and AP curriculum. They can repair or update their buildings and facilities. But direct financial funding to schools is not the only resource that impacts students' learning and education. People are resources. Every student needs the opportunity to develop healthy relationships with peers and responsible adults. Also, who, home and food security are resources, and freedom from home and food insecurity removes the distractions that negatively impact learning. N stands for next. Next steps, next actions. 
it is important to know that public education is not guaranteed in the US Constitution. Rather, public education is guaranteed by the Constitution of each individual state. Basically, education is a state issue. What this means is that there are more than 50 different educational systems in the United States, including DC, US territories, and even DOD schools. Therefore, education reform cannot be limited to one school, one city, or one state. It must be vigilantly undertaken everywhere to ensure fairness for every student in America. It is up to every person to act locally. This is a good time to bring up a special event happening this September. On September 12th, the Education Reform Pillar of the Social Justice Ministry will be hosting a special panel of experts and speakers to discuss the preschool to prison pipeline. We hope to see you there. There is work for all of us to do in education reform, no matter how dire the, the circumstances. Like Dr. King said, lightning makes no sound until it strikes. It's time that we strike. Uh, we got a few uh, suggestions for you. One is that you could read a news article about your local school, school district, uh, the school announcements or school policy. You can listen, listen for educational podcasts or local radio stations, the NPR program, uh, and take in some information there so you'll be able to act. Or you can write a pledge to participate in education reform. You can vote, definitely get out and vote and cast your decision about who is gonna be a part of the school and educational system there. So as we reflect on Isaiah 58, uh, that six to the 12th verse, we raise the question, what motivates you to wanna to pursue justice? Let us look to the Lord together now for the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the blessing of knowing that you call us not to be ritualistic, but to be faithful and obedient to do your will and releasing folks from bonds, feeding the hungry, and letting the poor know that your love pours through us to them. Use us now as instruments. Guide us that our social justice activity and education might reflect your love. In the precious name of Jesus, amen.